Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we are going to be working on getting an access token for the Google Identity Services login. In this tutorial, we're going to implement a token client for the services login. We're going to explain how authenticated requests with Google APIs use the access tokens. We're also going to explain the difference between implicit flow and authorization code flow for OAuth 2.0, which is incredibly relevant to the access tokens themselves and how they get used. And we're also going to call the Google Drive API using our generated access token for authentication. In this video, we're going to start out with the Google Identity Services login with React video. So we're going to be using all the code from there, including building your initial client ID for Google. So if you haven't done that, go over to that video and get started there. In this video, we're going to add on to this code by implementing a system where you can get access tokens for using Google APIs. Before getting into the code, you're going to want to go to the project that you created in the previous video, and you're going to want to go to APIs and services. Then you're going to want to press enable APIs and services. For this example, we're going to need the Google Drive API. You're going to go in here and you're going to press the API enable button here. On my account, I already enabled it, but it's the blue button right here. Just click it and you'll be good to go. Then your client ID you previously created will be ready to go when working with the Google Drive API. We're going to start by looking at the code from the previous video. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to take our client ID and turn it into a constant variable. So we're going to take the client ID that we used before to initialize the accounts, bring it to the top, and we're going to say const client underscore ID is equal to that string. So instead of saying this string down here, now we can say client underscore ID. Some people in the previous video were having issues with this global Google variable. We can also just say const Google is equal to window.google. Let's go into the root directory of our React project and say npm start just to make sure everything is working after those changes. Okay, so we have our project. There's a sign in with Google button. I'm going to sign in with the account that I've authorized for this client ID. And I'm gonna see that I've logged in fully. I see my certificate from Google over here and I also see some data related to the account. I can also sign out like I showed you previously in the other video. So the main focus of this video is that we want to get access tokens. Access tokens allow us to use Google APIs that need a specific user's authentication. For example, in this video, we're going to upload to a specific user's Google Drive. In order to get an access token, we need to create a thing called a token client. This allows us to talk to Google and for a specific user, get an access token specific to them. In order to get the access token of a specific user, we need to create something called a token client. We can create the token client by using google.accounts.oauth2.init token client. This function is a constructor for initializing the token client in your React application. The token client needs your client underscore ID so it knows where the requests are coming from, which we saved in the constant above. So we can just use client ID there. It also needs the scope and where you're trying to authorize specific resources. For example, Google Drive. So we can scroll up and make a constant for the scopes we plan to use for our APIs. In this video, we're going to use the Google Drive scope. If you're working with a different API, you're going to want your scopes to be different here. Look at the documentation and look for authorization scopes and make sure at least one of the authorization scopes is inside of your scope constant here. So we can go down and use the constant we just created by saying scope here. I'm actually gonna change that constant to scopes because you can have multiple different ones in there if you need so. You just need a space in between each link. So, so far this has just been set up. The main important part of the token client is that there is a callback function. This callback function is going to have a token response as a parameter. When we work with the token client, we are going to ask to request an access token. And the code's going to look like this. Token client dot request access token, which I'm just going to comment for now. This request access token function is going to show a little screen to the user and say, are you sure that you want to upload your files to Google Drive? Are you allowing the website to do so? Once the user says yes, it's going to hit this callback function with a valid access token. So right now we can just console.log the token response to see that token getting hit initially. I'm gonna make a little comment here saying, we now have access to a live token that's working to use for any Google API. So from this point forward in our callback, we can create functionality to interact with any Google API. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the Google Drive API. 
But for now, let's go create a button in our React page so we can call this token client dot request access token. So we can go in here and make a input with the type of submit on click equals create drive file. And so now we can go define this function above. We can go above our use effect and say function create drive file. We don't need the event in this case because all we're going to do is access this token client here dot request access token. You'll see this larger function we created with the google.accounts.oauth2.init token client. This is actually going to return a client that we can save in a React state. So let's do that. Go to the top of your application and say const token client, which is the value of the state, and then the setter for the state, which is going to be set token client. And we're going to say use state is equal to an empty object, which is going to eventually be all the functionality of the token client is going to sit in that object. So what we can do is when this function gets called and the token client gets initialized, we can set the value of our state to that created token client. This allows us to call the token client anywhere throughout our React page here. For example, at line 27, now we actually have access to the request access token. For now, all that's going to happen is we're going to click on a button and it's going to console.log our token response. So let's npm start our application and see what's happening. So we can log in with a certain user. I can then press create file. And here's the thing about getting access tokens. And I'm gonna talk about this in the end of the video. But when you do access tokens on the client side, whenever you do an authorized action, the token's only going to last a short period of time. And so what we have to do is we have to manually approve the action by going here and then selecting the same account. And then we get an access token specifically for that user. This is why the token client and the actual login client are two separate things. It's kind of confusing and I don't know why Google designed it like this, but you can completely sign out. And when you have to authenticate a specific action, you can do so for any user that's validated for your client ID. So for example, I'm completely signed out, but I can still go as Cooper codes here and then get another access token, for example. But you should be seeing a console.logged access token, which is a good sign. Now you can make validated requests for certain APIs, such as the Google Drive API. So I'm just gonna make a little if statement to do some error checking. We wanna make sure that the token response exists and that our token response has a access underscore token. Within here, we can actually do a fetch statement to a certain HTTP endpoint of the Google Drive API. So you can imagine there's a Google Drive API and we are talking to it with HTTP. There are other ways to talk to APIs. If anyone watching this video is using a different API, for example, you might have G API, which is the Google API script. It might be like dot calendar dot events or something. That's a different way of talking to the API. So whatever functionality seems to fit you best, you can put inside of this if statement. For example, I'm using an HTTP request, so I'm going to fetch to a certain link. The link for the Google Drive upload is HTTPS slash slash. We're then going to initialize some parameters to our fetch request here. Google asks that we post in order to create a certain file. And all we're gonna do here is create a file for a certain user. That's all we're gonna do. So it's a very simple request showing you how we have authenticated data with our access token. Google requires two important headers when making requests to the Google Drive API. One of them is that the content type has to be application slash JSON. Then we also need an authorization header, which is a super important point to this video. You're going to wanna to create backticks in order to use variables inside of the string. And I'm gonna say bearer and dollar sign and then we're gonna wrap our variable around this and say token response dot access underscore token. This authorization header allows us to show Google that we are an authorized user when talking to this link specifically. The body of the request is just gonna be some basic things to name the file for the certain user. So json.stringify. Then we can make an object to hold the data of the file. For example, the name, I'm just gonna call it Cooper Codes file. And then the MIME type, which is the type of data that the file is. So for example, text slash plain. If you wanna make a different type of file, you can look up like MIME types online. There's stuff for like Word, Excel, a bunch of different types, pretty much showing what the type of data is. We now have a full system for getting the token response access tokens and then making requests to APIs that require authorization. So let's start our application. The token client is for validating specific requests that require extra authentication. 
Google is very secure about how you communicate with their APIs, and that's why it's created this way. At the end of the video, I will discuss the authorization code flow, which doesn't require you to constantly be asking the user for new access tokens. But for now, let's create a file. All right, so we got an access token and the rest of our code ran. So go to the Google Drive account of whatever person you just clicked on. So now inside of my Google Drive, I just created a file called Cooper Codes file and its type is of text. And so we just use the access token to pretty much go into a user's more personal information, for example, their personal Google Drive, and then create things in there. So we now have a React application that allows us to create authorized requests to any Google API. It's kind of annoying though. The user is going to have to approve every single request and it doesn't matter if they're logged in or not, they're gonna to have to make an approved request in order to use any specific functionality. For example, how we have to authorize every single request to the Google Drive API. We have to authorize every single request because what I've pretty much just shown you guys so far is called implicit flow. For every single token request, there is user consent required and the user has to be present. When you make authorization code flow, you only have to ask for that first token request, and then they will get something called a refresh token. This refresh token allows them to continuously communicate with your backend. That's one of the main differences is that implicit flow, we didn't have to create a backend for our application. Authorization code flow, you need to pretty much have endpoint hosting and storage, and you also need to be able to store a refresh token for a certain user. You can imagine it like this. When the user is only on the front end, the token's being stored on their computer. And so as soon as their computer goes away, they close out your website or they move away, for example, what's gonna happen is the user is gonna lose that token forever. If you can get a refresh token, you can store it on your own backend server, your own database. If you guys are interested in a video covering authorization code flow, I can definitely make something around that, especially when it comes to creating an Apollo server setup around storing refresh tokens and storing them alongside users in a database. Thanks so much for watching.